cotton rows, cotton blankets. Sprawled on the back of a flatbed truck, we cradled hose, our minds parceling rows of cotton to be chopped by noon. Dawn stuck in the air. Blackbirds rang the willows. Ahead, a horse trailer stretched across the road. Braced by youth and lengths of summer breeze, we didn't give a damn. We'd be late, we joked, stalled by a pregnant mare draped in sheets. It's a pretty empowering combination to be both Chicana and writer. When I was growing up, I didn't identify as Chicana until I was in college. And to be um, a spokesperson, then it became a very simple step to moving from being outspoken to being a writer. So the combination of the two, I think, allows me a larger audience. I came to college originally when I was 18 years old in 1968, thinking I'd become a teacher. And then, like many people in their late teens, early 20s, I changed from an English major to a Spanish major, back to an English major, got pregnant, had a baby, was a single mother on welfare. And basically, it took me 23 years to finish my degree because I had to work full time, go to school part time. Some semesters, I had to take a um, leave of absence because I was just too exhausted and couldn't keep going. And at the end of the semester, I changed my major to English with a creative writing emphasis. And a year later, I was in the MFA program in creative writing at San Diego State. I remember the very first lesson um, the professor set, told us was, write what you know. And I did. I wrote about what it was like to be the daughter of farm workers. I wrote about what it was like to be outdoors at dawn, what it was like to see the quail moving across the ground and the rabbits jumping out. Except that he loved the ones where I focused on nature. A year later, when I started writing about what it was like to have labor contractors who didn't let you get water at lunch, this is in the old days before the UFW, who didn't let you use the outhouses, sometimes didn't have outhouses and you had to just take a dump at the end of the field. Um, when I started writing those kinds of poems, he said that they were too raw and too ugly. Um, and basically felt that there was something wrong with the kind of work that I was producing. But I was older by this time, I was in my late 30s, and I had a very strong sense of what I needed to write by this time. And I didn't have to listen to a professor who didn't know my life and didn't know my experience. And I kept on writing those poems. In my culture growing up, if you were ambitious, it was seen as a negative quality. It was seen as thinking you're too good, that you're better than everybody else, and you're just trying to leave everybody in the dust. But that wasn't the case at all. To be ambitious for yourself means that you recognize you have a gift and you recognize you have something to offer, and you'd be foolish, and you'd be cut, cutting your own throat if you didn't follow up on that. To be ambitious means taking advantage of every opportunity presented to you. Y con ganas. Okay. <laughs>